Thank you, Struan, uh, Mrs. President, dear friends. I, I thank you, and you must pay more attention to what I say. I want to say it here very clearly. If another attack, of course, will be the regime in Iran and, and, and Prime Minister Maliki, but this responsibility will be shared by the 28 governments of the 28 member states. Because Because, because they know that this uh, can happen. We have been informing them for two years, every day, every week. So uh, this must be very clear, because everyone must hold it, its responsibility. We are uh, very glad that President Mariam Rajavi has accepted once again our invitation. We are always ready to learn from her uh, as leader of the Iranian democratic opposition. I will refer very briefly to three issues today. The first issue is the silence and inaction on the part of the European Union, and especially Lady Ashton, regarding the crime against humanity that took place at Ashraf on the 1st of September. This crime has not finished. It's ongoing since the Iraqi government continues to hold seven members of the PMOI as hostages. I know, and Mrs. Ashton knows, that the hostages are being held in Baghdad. The uh, European Union's uh, ambassador there other diplomats in, in Baghdad, in Amnesty, Amnesty International, say the same. But the European Union has not taken a strong stance with the Iraqi government yet. She should call loudly on the Iraqi government to release the hostages immediately. Otherwise, Iraq's relations with the European Union will be affected. She has many ways to put pressure on Maliki. She has all the uh, levies to, to play with, to uh, force him to act uh, rightly. Mrs. Ashton has also been silent about the horrendous executions in Iran, which have sharply increased since Rouhani took the presidency. They moderate, moderate Rouhani. We should never put negotiating above basic human right. Okay. Yeah. But, but, but this negotiation is not even a negotiation. They, they are pulling her leg and she is she's, she's accepting it. So the second issue uh, is uh, the role of the United States, United Nations, and uh, European Union. They have all, Struan was also saying that, they, they have all violated their legal obligations, legal obligations they signed, and commitments to Ashraf and, and Liberty. And this uh, fact that they are not complying with the legal obligations is what led to the catastrophe the 1st of September in, in, in Ashraf. As you know, Prime Minister Maliki is now talking about these 120 arrest warrants and this will be used to pave the way for another uh, massacre. Many of these uh, ridiculous uh, warrants are for persons who have never been in Iraq. Persons that passed away many years ago, some of them. I should remind you that the residents of Camp Liberty were screened by various U.S. agencies for 16 months in 2003. Senior U.S. officials confirmed 
that there were no charges against them. And on the 2nd of July, 2004, recognized them as protected persons under the 4th Geneva Convention. These bodies that were lying on the floor in, in, in Ashraf, shot in the head, were protected persons under the 4th Geneva Convention. The residence lawyers have repeatedly asked the Iraqi government to present to international courts any proof they have of illegal, illegal actions of the residents. Not a single document has been presented. Of course, <laughs> they, do, they do not exist. <clears throat> Meanwhile, evidence of the Iraqi government's uh, evil conduct towards the PMOI members is growing and should lead to a conviction of them and their boss in Tehran. The U.S., the United Nations, the, the European Union, the, the three of them guaranteed the security of the residents until the last person was transferred out of Iraq. And it was upon such assurances that residents moved to, to liberty. And the third and last issue I want to uh, speak about today with you is the hunger strike by our friends at Liberty and, and in, Washington, in Washington, in Geneva, and other cities uh, around the world. When the rights are trampled upon and their loved ones are being executed, uh, while the major powers are covering their eyes, and the United Nations, at best, is silent. What else can they do but resist and pay the price with their own lives in order to attract the world's attention and try to move global conscience? We have repeatedly asked the American authorities, the European Union, to respond positively to their legitimate demands. The U.S. government could and can make Iraq release the hostages and provide protection for liberty, but three months after, nothing has been accomplished. Even, even the bodies of the 52 people assassinated have not been returned for burial. Such a cruelty. It is shameful for our governments to have no option left but hunger strike and this is the fault I repeat of United uh, Nations of United States and of the European Union Mrs. Rajavi has repeatedly asked those hunger strikes who are already in extreme physical conditions to end their strike she has talked to them by the phone repeatedly she has dispatched representatives to various cities to convince them to stop the, the hunger strike. But they continue to resist. In today's world, this is highly admirable. Giving your life for a just cause, for gaining a legitimate right, for defending the security of others, and for, the, for defending moral For, for defending moral values. When I was in, in Ashraf in 2008, Ashraf was, and I said in that occasion that Ashraf was a symbol and a reference and an example, and today even more, after the sacrifice of, of, these, of these heroes of, of freedom. I salute them, and I promise uh, I reiterate our promise that we are in this together, that we here, many members in the European Parliament, we are uh, one Ashrafi uh, among Ashrafis, and we will be until three. <laughs> we, we will be.
Ivy. Mm. Mm. We will be until a free uh, Iran is accomplished. Thank you very much.